Hey, thanks for checking out this podcast. Our hope is that it's an encouragement to you, that it builds your faith, that it helps you be a better leader and a better influencer in and through your life. If this is helpful to you, we'd love you to subscribe and also share it with somebody else to encourage them too. Thanks. Hey, Victory Church. I want to share with you what I think is one of the biggest keys to being a fruitful church. And one of the reasons I want to share this with you, if you uh, are part of Victory in any way, shape, or form, is because I see you as Team Victory or as the ministers of Victory Church. So when you understand what makes us a fruitful church, uh, you become a part of helping us be that more and more. And so uh, I have this sort of statement that I use, and we use it around our church quite a bit, and we say this, why not all three? Why not all three? And there's three areas that are really important for being a fruitful church. And they are, very simply, biblical faithfulness, spiritual passion, or passionately spiritual, and cultural relevance. So it's those three things, being absolutely faithful to Scripture, 100%, never compromising, not even a little bit. Being absolutely passionate about the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, needing the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, being a Holy Spirit-filled, anointed church, and not compromising on that, not even a little bit. We're a 100% Holy Spirit passion church. And then the third one, cultural relevance. That is, we find ways to speak the language of culture, to get the message of Scripture in the power of the Holy Spirit delivered in a way that actually connects with and that actually ministers to people and that people can actually get a hold of it. Because if we're giving it to people and they don't get it, it's a waste of time. So what we say around here is why not all three? Why not do all three of those things together? So let me show this to you on a whiteboard. So imagine these three circles are those three areas, okay? So we have a church that's biblical, right? And when I say biblical, I mean 100% a Bible church. We follow the Bible. We believe the Bible. We live the Bible. We love the Bible. We believe it's God's Word and God's uh, alive Word that is is powerful, that God anoints and uses. Then we're a Holy Spirit church, right? We are passionately spiritual. And again, 100%. And then uh, culturally relevant church right? So we have those three that work together. Now, here's what tends to happen. Uh, Churches tend to think, or Christians tend to think, well, one of those is the most important, and we'll compromise on one to get the other. And I think uh, we, we miss out on the fullness and fruitfulness of what God has. So the sweet spot is right in the middle. That's fruitfulness. Um, but what happens when you only pick some of this and not all of this? Well, if you're a Uh, a Bible-only church. You're just Bible, 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 Bible. We love the Bible. We believe the Bible, but we don't have the Holy Spirit, and we don't worry about making it relevant to the people we're ministering to, making it applicable to their daily life, and helping them understand it, speaking it to them in a language they understand. If we're Bible, Bible, Bible only, what tends to happen is we tend to just be a kind of a boring or what might be called a dead church, right? It's just like, eh. And, and we've all been there. And you, they, these churches tend to be kind of angry and just, come on, this is God's word, Arr. right? And there's, there's not the power of the Holy Spirit, and there's not, it's not delivered in a way that people can receive it and grasp it. So that's that. Now, Holy Spirit-only churches, they're just spirit, 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 raw, but they're willing to compromise on Scripture, and they don't care about being relevant to culture. These churches tend to just be weird, right? They're just uh, they, they're sort of scary, freak people out. Um, they, they don't bring God's uh, message to people in a way that, that connects with them. And then churches that are only about relevance, they don't have the Holy Spirit, they don't have Scripture. These are actually pretty rare churches. Um, but these would be churches that I would call lost. So really, they don't have God's Word. They don't have a message. They don't have anything to bring, and they don't have any power. So they're just kind of meander around trying to figure out what their mission is. And uh, sometimes churches that have been around a really, really long time fall into this. I think of uh, current day, the United Church, and some of those churches that have kind of lost their way and no longer really believe in God's Word and no longer really flow in the power of the Holy Spirit. And they want to be relevant to culture, but they're just totally lost. Now, what can happen, though, is a lot of churches will pick uh, a group of these, right? So, um, if a church is Bible, or let's say a church is is, um, uh, Holy Spirit and culturally relevant. So, they have that, but they don't have much Scripture, right? They just got lots of the Holy Spirit, and they're really relevant. They can bring the Holy Spirit in a way that's not weird, 
right? But in a way that connects with culture, but they're willing to compromise on scripture. I would call that a dangerous church, right? That's, that's where you get sort of like, yikes, because they've got influence now. They're culturally relevant. They got lots of Holy Spirits. They got power, but yikes, they're not faithful to scripture. That could tend towards cult-like or dangerous. You know, you, you, you're concerned about where that might take people. Now, if you have a church that's biblical and that's culturally relevant, so they got lots of scripture and lots of relevance, um, I would call this a powerless church, right? They're willing to compromise on the power of the Holy Spirit. So they're, they're really good at bringing truth, and they're really good at bringing it in a relevant way, and it's really nice, and it's really applicable to life, but there's no miracles happening. There's no real life change. There's no real salvations where a life gets totally transformed by the power of God, right? And there's a lot of churches in evangelicalism that fall into this category, and uh, a, a lot of the reason for the charismatic church that was birthed in, in the early 1900s was because a lot of churches were getting lost down this path. Um, so that can happen. Now, um, also, you can have a church that's biblical, that's got the Holy Spirit, but that's not relevant, that doesn't uh, care about making it uh, reach current culture. And I actually think this is where the majority of the evangelical church lands nowadays. Um, and it's, I, I would say where a lot of the charismatic church lands nowadays. And I would call this church a selfish church. They're a selfish church. It's just, yeah, we've got God's word and we've got the Holy Spirit and it's awesome. And well, lost people don't get it and they don't really feel welcome here or accepted here or comfortable here. And it doesn't really make any sense to them. And it mostly, um, you know, it, it doesn't work for them. But hey, it's really not about them anyway. It's about us and it's about, you know, us connecting with God. And so it tends to be in focused or selfish. But when you get all of these three working together, and they're all important, then you have fruitfulness. And the big thing that I want to you know, share with you for our church is that it's not just all three working together in balance, like 33% each. It's 100% to all three of them. It's we will not ever, ever compromise on any of these because they're all essential to fruitfulness in ministry and to what God has for us. So the kind of church we want to be to be fruitful is an all-in kind of church. All in when it comes to Scripture. All in when it comes to being filled with the Holy Spirit and having the power of the Holy Spirit. All in when it comes to reaching people and connecting with people right where they're at in their lives and, re and, and caring about them. So we, we, we don't compromise on any of them. We're all in on all of them. And we don't think any of them have to compete with the others. We think that you can be all three all the time. So I encourage you to be that in your own life. You'll find fruitfulness there. And of course, you and I are the church. And then I encourage you to look for us being that and doing that in everything we do as a church. Thank you, and I hope that's helpful to you.